you know, we've got I love you and Han Solo says I know shirts back here. We've got lots of good things going. The robes, very, very cool. So um, I got to tell you, if you are someone like me who finds spiritual wisdom in Star Wars, you are not alone. Researching for this thing, there, were more, there are more rabbit holes that you can go down than you can throw a carrot at. There's even a thing called Wookiepedia for Wookiespedia and a thing called Acolytes of the Force. No kidding, and that's just scratching the surface. Um, I wanted to give a shout out today to Reverend Gordon Keeler from Unity of Albuquerque because when I started preparing um, to do these talks, I Googled Metaphysics of Star Wars and tripped onto, he has done a three-part series and I've pulled a lot of stuff from his series and he goes into more weeds than I do. So if you really like this stuff, I'd highly recommend you check out um, the series on Metaphysics of Star Wars from Unity of Albuquerque. Now, in part one, I shared the concept of the Force, which is, I think, the most obvious Star Wars metaphysical aspect. The Force is an invisible energy source that, that life generates and enhances and grows and that holds the galaxy together, that is in and through all things. That is totally aligned with Unity's first principle, which is God is not an entity out there, but is a principle that is in a, a, a source, a force, a creator that is in and through all things, including us. In part one, we also talked about some of the major lessons that these archetypical characters can show us. The power of faith, the power of lack of faith, right? That's thinking, the power of our thoughts. Um, and the importance of spiritual practices and disciplines. Today I'm going to do a little, I think, deeper dive into some of the more profound, maybe not as obvious, um, teachings that are reflected in these stories. So for anyone who's been under a rock and doesn't remember the setting, remember that the whole, this whole galaxy is at war. Basically, two sides of what once was the same religion are locked in this back and forth battle. The Jedi are the good guys. They're the ones who use the light side of the force. And the Sith are the bad guys. They use the dark side of the force for power and greed. And, and the Sith have gained a lot of traction, a lot of power in the starting of these shows. And in fact, they've basically created um, a brutal autocratic government and have created a whole, you know, generations of subservient, fearful, peasants. That's kind of the setting for this. Now, in response, the Jedi and Jedi supporters have, have formed this thing called the Resistance. And they get to that in a minute. The Resistance, and they're trying to keep the Sith from, or the Sith from taking um, control of everything. And threading through this whole story is the, a prophecy, prophecy of a chosen one, someone who can bring balance back to the Force. I am not completely clear what is meant by that, but it's clear that the Jedi believe that the way to do that is basically to wipe out the Sith. That's how they're looking to bring, um, to bring balance to the Force. And at the outset, it's believed that this young uh, former slave boy named Anakin is that chosen one. And I shared the story, but the wise... Um, kind of wise rebel, non-dogmatic Jedi master, Kigon Jin, he discovers this boy and listens to his instinct and brings him into Jedi training. From the very get-go, Anakin is a difficult personality and he's rebellious and both Kigon Jin and Yoda sense a lot of fear and a lot of anger in him. And in fact, fear is what turns Anakin fully to the dark side. It's fear of losing his wife, they don't, they've married in secret, Padme. He is so, when, when Anakin was taken as a boy out of the slave, away from the slave planet, his mother was forced to stay behind. And he later finds out that she had been kidnapped and, and she dies in his arms. And he's terrified of death. He's very body oriented, right? He believes mostly that he's a body. And so um, the, the emperor, the bad guy, Palpatine, convinces Anakin, that if he will study with him, if he will fully commit to the dark side, they, that he'll, they'll be able to prevent his wife from dying, that they have that, that power. Now, it's worth noting, in our current time, we live in a culture that is drenched in fear. 
and it drives a lot of the darkness, perhaps most of the darkness. A Course in Miracles literally teaches there is either love or fear, one or the other. You could almost call that the light or the dark side, right? I'll come back to this in a minute. We are in a culture that fears death, that fears the other, that fears lack, and we're, t we're, we're showered in those messages. A major dynamic through the, the Star Wars stories is the back and forth between the light and the dark. And they're equally powerful. When you get, when you, as I was getting more into this to prepare this talk, because I'm not actually quite as deep a geek, well, I am now um, for this. Uh, I, I learned many more things about this whole, this whole dynamic world that's been built. Yeah, I could have talked to you guys. Um, the millennia, or for millennia, the power has shifted like a pendulum. The dark side has more power, the light side has more power, and they battle back and forth to try to be in control of the galaxy, and neither side has ever won. Does this sound at all familiar <laughs> to our world right now? Now, on the surface, the Sith, think Darth Vader, think Darth Maul, they appear purely evil. And I think that they play the archetypical character of Satan, or the devil. In fact, in the movies, Darth Maul literally is red and black and looks like what I would grew up thinking of Satan being. That's the role that they play. Now, I think the concept of evil and of darkness is one that unity people struggle with. It's one that new thought people struggle with. And I've heard a lot of discomfort around, is there actually evil? What is evil? I've heard Unity people say that it's just an illusion, that at the level of truth, there is no evil. I've heard Unity people say it's actually just um, uh, live backwards, right? So I believe it's an important topic to talk about, and I believe Star Wars gives us a little bit of a template for doing that. Where I stand on this right now is I think at our true essence, the truth of who all beings are, there is no evil. But when we are under the influence of ego, under the influence of human littleness, under the influence of fear, we can do evil things and put evil things out into this world. And I just think that is something that we need to be honest about. Now, the Star Wars teaches that we have both light and dark within us. And there's an interesting scene when I mentioned the, um, when Luke Skywalker went to the swamp planet to train with Yoda. And one of, and Luke had a tremendous fear of Darth Vader at the time, who he did not know at this point that Darth Vader was his father. But he goes through this like metaphysical training session, he goes into this cave and, he, and, and, and Darth Vader, his, he manifests his fear, right? Darth Vader appears and they're battling it out with the lightsabers and Luke spins around and cuts off Darth Vader's head. It's not gruesome in the scene, no blood. But when the, that helmeted head rolls over and rolls up, it's Luke's own face in it that he sees. The metaphysics there is we have dark inside us as well. And Luke is actually terrified of that. I'll, get, I'll come back to that throughout his whole, his whole journey through this. Now, the other aspect of we have light and dark within us is at the end, so the two major bad guys threading through this are, of course, Darth Vader, and then Han Solo's son, Ben Solo, he later goes to the light, and he, he gets renamed Kylo Ren, and he becomes a Darth, and they're very bad guys. At the end of their journeys, both of them turn to the light. They return to the light, remember who they are, and actually sacrifice themselves for someone else, or sacrifice themselves for the greater good. I think no matter what we've done in ego sickness, there is always a spark of divine within, always a spark there. And it's a, that's a beautiful demonstration of that. And if you have a little faith in that person, it helps to bring it out. Little faith helps to bring it out. Now, one of the biggest drivers of our dark side, as I mentioned, is fear. And I will share, um, I've had some pretty profound insights into my own dark side. This chatbot thing is so perfect for this talk today because I wanted to share the story. I've shared it before. When I was being targeted in a big public shaming and I had, a, I had a 
chunk of media and political figures really lying about me and spreading horrific accusations, and I, you can't defend yourself when you're in a public position like that, and I was so angry. I literally wanted to hurt them the way they were hurting me. I would, I would think about being able to run them down, a, f a few of these folks, down with my car. I thought about wanting one of them to be exposed as having been a pedophile. Now, I knew even as I was thinking those things, it was crazy. I knew I was in temporary insanity and that I didn't really want to put that out in the world. But I will tell you, having that come up for me so powerfully absolutely gave me no out on addressing my own shadow, right? There's, there's no option then, and it honestly helped me really begin the process of forgiveness because I could understand I could understand how this was happening. I could understand better how a person could get there. Now, darkness, or shadow, as it might be understood in Jungian psychology, it's widely recognized as a place where we meet hidden aspects of ourselves, things that we keep repressed. We often don't want to look at some of those things. We don't want to admit that they're there. But usually, we have to do some of that work in order to grow, in order to grow and transform. And that, I think, is the more subtle side of the dark side in Star Wars. And in fact, I mentioned last time that I thought Yoda had a blind spot. This is it. The Jedi were terrified of the dark, and they were terrified of the dark within themselves. They were terrified that they would not be able to, to control it. Over and over, this comes up as I started looking for it. It was so obvious. Now, J Joda, or Yoda actually taught Joda, Yoda the Jedi. He, he says, anger, fear, aggression. The dark side are they. Once you start down the dark path, forever will it dominate your destiny. They didn't even want to look at those things. They so feared that it would forever dominate their destiny. destiny. How many of you have never had fear, anger, or aggression? Right? It's part of our human journey. It's part of our spiritual path toward Earth-based Jedi. Now later, Luke is training the young apprentice, Ben Solo. This is Han Solo's son. He's training him before Ben chooses the dark side. And Luke can sense a darkness in Ben. He can sense that he has tremendous power and he has a draw toward the dark. And Luke literally goes to him in his sleep and he's just about to murder him in his sleep. He's got the lightsaber up and Ben wakes up. And it was a shattering moment for Ben, for ben Solo because he, he, it was a complete betrayal of trust. And it also was shattering for Luke because his shadow had come up and he went into exile at that point and actually cut himself off from the force completely because he was so afraid of, it, of, the, of the dark, what the dark side brought to it. Now, I find it's interesting that the Jedi movement is called the resistance. A lot of us in New Thought are taught that what we resist persists, right? This wraps into that whole concept of is there evil? Is there, is there darkness? Every master teacher that I know of, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, they all taught the power of nonviolence. And indeed, we see over and over again that aggression breeds more aggression. War creates the next generation of terrorists. It's, it's a cycle that we see play out over and over. Lowell Fillmore is one of the, um, the Fillmores, Merle and Charles, who are the major founders of Unity. He was one of, their, one of their kids, and he wrote, It requires great bravery to express non-resistance and love. When we are truly brave, we shall overcome all strife in the world. The world can never know peace, and men will never be happy in association with one another before they learn that evil can only be overcome with good. There is no other way. As you would say, this is the way, right? In our world today, with war raging in several places and the war on nature playing out so profoundly, um, I think that this can be a complicated topic. And I've been teaching metaphysics classes lately, spiritual education and enrichment classes, and in fact, um, we have a unity or a metaphysical princi or a principle called the law of non-resistance. 
But I'm going to push back on that a little bit. I think it is helpful to clarify what we mean. I think it's how we resist. Jesus, when he overturned the money lender's table, he was resisting the use of, the, of those sacred areas for that kind of activity, right? I know for sure that I resist and speak out against the damage being done to nature. I resist violence being done to other beings. I resist my own shadow, as I just mentioned. But I'm not violent. I resist my own violent thoughts. I think we really will be well served in thinking about the difference between non-resistance and non-violence. As a lifelong environmental activist, I have learned that often that movement is at the same level of thinking that's creating the problem in the first place, because it's us versus them. It's, a, it's an ungrounded activism and resistance. So this brings me to the character of Ray. She is the main character in the last three movies, which were The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker. I think that they are, I don't care about so much The Force Awakens, but I think the last two are phenomenal. Anyway, she's a pivotal person, and she starts out, when we first get introduced to her, she's a young um, teenager, she's a scavenger. She's on her own, her parents are gone. She's a scavenger, she's a self-taught mechanic and pilot on this desolate desert planet. Um, and, and she just goes by the name Ray. And in a scene, someone asks who, who she is, and she literally says of herself, no one. This is kind of her identity starting into this. She gets caught up in this galactic conflict through a series of synchronistic events, and she starts to realize that she can sense the force. She starts to realize there's something in her she hadn't known about. And she goes into apprenticeship training with Luke Skywalker. They go to a distant island, and Luke, once again, is terrified because Rey has a natural affinity for the dark side and the light side. She's not too afraid of the dark side. She'll, she'll explore when it calls her into those places. And later, we learn that Rey's grandfather was the evil Darth Sidious, right? She, AKA Emperor Palpatine. So she's actually Rey Palpatine, and that does start to scare her when she finds out, when she finds out that, because she also has the abilities of some of, of, the, of her dark ancestry. She can do force lightning, which is such a cool thing. Most Jedi can't do force lightning, but she can, and she can control it. This freaks Luke out, right? So Ray and Ben Solo, um, again, who becomes Kylo Ren, they have this interesting... It's an, important, it's an important part of the story. They have some sort of a soul connection that in Star Wars Dumb is called a force dyad. They are linked, and he is in the dark side, he's a Sith, and she is in the light side. She is on her path to being, becoming a super powerful Jedi. On top of that, Luke, at, at, at a final point, finally sacrifices his life to save Rey. And when he does, he lets her know he is still with her in spirit, just like Obi-Wan has been with Luke, right? They are, these, these guys, these two are beyond bodies. They know that, there's, that they're more now than just the bodies that they're wearing. Now, a whole lot goes down, but in the end, Rey is battling Darth Sidious, who has come back from the dead. So this is like her ancestor. He's come back, and they're battling, and she's opened up to the truth of herself, as a spiritual being and as a powerful being connected to the Force and even connected to her mentors and predecessors. And Darth Sidious is fighting her and it's both battle and psychological warfare and he says to her, you are nothing. A scavenger girl is no match for the power in me. I am all Sith. And she says, I, I am all the Jedi. So this is the girl who goes from, and she vanquishes Darth uh, Sidious in that moment, and the fourth, uh, force is indeed brought back into balance. Rey and Kylo Ren blend the light and dark. They need one another to do this great thing that has been done on the force, for the force of the greater good. Unlike Luke, who cut himself off from the force entirely out of fear of it and anger about what it was doing, these two are embracing it. They're showing a different way. 
Wherever we have darkness within us, it is not a place to hide from. It is a place that's waiting for light, right? That is what darkness is. You can't, you can't really appreciate the light if we don't also have the dark. I find it useful to consider as we head into winter solstice, right? Right now we're in the darkest period of the year with the longest nights and the least amount of daylight. And during this heart, dark heart of winter, nature isn't just sleeping. Nature's pulling in reserves. Nature's, nature's pulling in the resources needed to give birth to spring right around the corner. A seed absolutely has to have dark to sprout, right? As we head toward Christmas, which in Christendom is all about the birth of a savior again, I wanna, I wanna talk about this saviordom thing that runs through Western culture, Christmas time, runs through the Star Wars story. The expectation of a savior, both Anakin and Luke were believed to be, Luke Skywalker were believed to be the chosen one. Turned out neither one of them were. They weren't saviors. At the end of the day, none of them got the job done, and what it actually took was several people significantly redesigning, recreating their identity. And I wanna play a clip. This is Ray's journey. And I wanna play a clip, it's about four minutes long. Can you pull that up? Who are you? You got a name? I'm right. Right. She would be honored to know your family name too. You. I don't have one. A scavenger. I'm just Ray. I'm just a scavenger. The resistance sent me. They sent you. I could do this. What's special about you? Where are you from? I didn't know there was this much green in the whole galaxy. Nowhere. I've got to get back to Jakku. I have to get back to Jakku. You're so lonely. You're a pilot. You can fly anywhere. Why go back? I have to get home. You got a family? Do you want to know the truth about your parents? You already know the truth. Or have you always known? Whoever you're waiting for in Jakku. None of your business, that's why. I've already been away too long. So afraid to leave. They're never coming back. Your parents threw you away like garbage. They didn't. They did. I know all about waiting. Do you still count the days since your parents left? For my family. Let me see them. They were nobody. My parents. They'll be back. They're a filthy junk trade. We sold you off for drinking money. One day. You come from nothing. You're nothing. But you can't stop needing them. It's your greatest weakness. Looking for them everywhere. And Han Solo, you feel like he's the father you never had. Now in Skywalker. Your parents were no one. They chose to be. To keep you safe. You are a Palpatine. Something inside me has always been there. What are you most afraid of? Then I was awake. Myself. There has been an awakening. Have you felt it? what it is, what to do with it. Just breathe. Close your eyes. Reach out with your feelings. Feel it. The light, it's always been there. It will guide you. What do you see? Balance and energy. A force. And inside you. Inside me. She is strong with the force. That same force. Untrained but stronger than she knows. I think I can handle myself. Going to find the Palpatine. It's calling me. And destroy him. in our nature. I've seen this raw strength only once before. I lost control. 
such anger. People keep telling me they know me. I'm afraid no one does. You didn't scare me enough then. It does now. who are you? And she says, I am Ray Skywalker. She not only has chosen to release the past, not only has chosen to, to stop telling the story that someone who was abandoned by their parents can't be great, whatever, not only has she chosen to release her own self-identity, which is no easy thing to do, she then says, I'm not only going to have a last name, I am going to walk in sky consciousness. I am going to embrace what I truly am. There's a force awakening within me. This is our, all of our journeys. We all have the right and the capacity to retell our story, to shift our identity. I've heard it said that the most powerful word we ever use or phrase we ever use is the one that we put right after I am. Right? That's why we sing that song, be still and know I am. It's a powerful, powerful teaching. There's another piece to this savior thing. So at the end of the day, we're our own saviors, is really where I'm going with this. Another super fascinating part that I had missed the first time I played with all of these stories. Um, previously, Yoda, in considering that Anakin had turned to the dark side, this whole prophecy, prophecy thing, there's a line where Yoda says, um, a prophecy misread could have been starting to question the teachings, right? Question the Jedi code and even the histories. And I want to say, I want to, um, and then I note, and then Luke Skywalker also has a huge point of disillusionment, and he starts to realize that the Jedi Order and the Jedi Code are problematic in and of themselves. And I'd like to play the second, the second scene. It's not as long. So Luke is... Master Yoda. Young Skywalker. I'm ending all of this. The tree, the text, the Jedi. I'm gonna burn it down. So it is time for the Jedi Order to end. Time it is. <laughs> for you to look past a pile of old books. <laughs> the sacred Jedi texts. Oh, read them, have you? Well, on page turners, they were not. 
Yes, yes, yes. Wisdom they held, but that library contained nothing that the girl Ray does not already possess. Hmm. Skywalker. Still looking to the horizon. Never hear that. Hmm? The need in front of your nose. Hmm. I was weak. Unwise. Lost Ben Solo. Fugitive. Lose Ray. We must not. I can't be what she needs me to be. Heeded my words not, did you? Pass on what you have learned. Strength, mastery. Hmm. But weakness, folly, failure also. Yes, failure most of all. The greatest teacher failure is. <laughs> What they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. Skywalker, I've missed you, right? He's missed the folly of it. That's kind of hard to hear, so I'm going to just retell it real quickly. What happened there is they blew up all the Jedi sacred texts, all the teachings. <laughs> Luke felt the draw to do it, but then couldn't quite follow through. And Yoda laughs and says, oh, you silly, you silly. Have you read them? Of course not. They're not page turners. He said, everything that's in those is in Rey already, is in her already. And the beautiful part of the last piece of that scene, Luke is so ashamed of himself for having had fear, for having made mistakes. And Yoda says, it's not just the wisdom that you pass on. Some of your greatest passings on to, 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 to the people that you're touching, the people that you're teaching, are showing them your weakness, showing them your fear. Fear is your greatest teacher, Yoda says. All masters want their apprentices to surpass them. And we help, we, we help people do that when we are honest and open in showing our own dark sides, right? And then moving forward anyway. We do that when we allow our identities to shift and when we realize there are no saviors, there are no external saviors, there are no chosen ones, dogma's not gonna do it. We do it when we really allow ourselves to open up to truth, to open up to that deep knowing that we have within. A Course in Miracles teaches and Jesus in the Bible taught, you are the light of the world. That's a profound statement. You are the light of the world. You with your grandeur and your humanness. That is the light of the world. That's what Yoda was just explaining. I just want to say, you're your own savior. You are the light of the world. And may you have a ton of fun learning to wield your power and tap into the force in an arc toward a world that works better for all beings. The force is with you. Mm -hmm.